So what happens when you combine radioactivity in the form of 20 kilograms of uranium ore with a high voltage of 1000 volts? This might sound like a very dangerous idea at first glance and on the second glance as well. However, there is some elegant nuclear chemistry behind it. Of course, like in all laboratory works, the essential scene for checking for radiation levels, putting on the green lab coat and wearing the dosimeter is necessary. So again, I gotta translate my own German for you. There we have the blue barrel yet again and today we are going to do something with this one cent coin. We will use this coin as an electrode to gather all the decay products from the radon that accumulates inside this barrel. First I gotta open the barrel and what I'm using here is our thorium cow. It's basically a device to create high voltages. The coin gets connected to the negative pole. Now place the connected coin inside the barrel alongside the positive pole and of course make sure that the cables don't touch. After half an hour the now radioactive coin can be taken to the alpha spectrum. Once there it can be measured for 1000 seconds to obtain a spectrum. I intentionally cut it out like this to now overlay the radium spectrum from the previous video. These two signals should look familiar. It's polonium 218 at 6 mega electron volts and polonium 214 at 7.6 mega electron volts. But here you can clearly see differences. Two radionuclides are missing and the polonium 214 peak is much larger in comparison. Now we gotta figure out why. So what did I do with the 1000 volt of high voltage? The barrel contains uranium minerals. The contained uranium decays into radium which subsequently decays into radon, a gas. This gas is present in slightly higher quantities in this barrel and continuously decays into polonium 218 cations which deposit themselves on the coin. Polonium cations? Now I guess I have to explain the mechanism of a radioactive decay in a bit further detail. I will focus on the alpha decays but it's similar for the beta decays as well. The alpha particle that gets ejected during the decay of radon is relatively light compared to the nucleus with a ratio of 4 to 218. When it's ejected it has a certain momentum. According to the law of conservation of momentum the resulting polonium 218 nucleus must also receive a momentum in the opposite direction. In this momentum there is enough energy to surpass the ionization energies of some valence electrons. This is the answer that I asked myself in the 10th grade. What happens with the electrons during a decay? They do not stay with the daughter nucleus. They will eventually be absorbed by alpha particles from other decays in the material. So after the decay of radon we have positive polonium ions. Since we connected the coin to the negative pole these freshly formed polonium ions are deposited on the coin. Now I have a fixed amount of polonium 218 on the coin and during the time it took me to reach the detector my polonium 218 has decayed into lead 214. Of course it also decayed during the collection but we didn't notice it. Upon arrival the alpha detector can now see that there is still a very small amount of polonium 218 left which makes sense because it took me about 20 minutes to get there. The formed lead 214 decays with a half-life of 26 minutes into bismuth 214 which also has a half-life of 20 minutes. These two longer lived radionuclides are still in larger quantities due to the decay of polonium during the transportation on the coin and this bismuth now now constantly produces more and more shortly lived polonium 214 which can decay almost immediately during the measurement causing this peak to seem as large as it is. So most of the 218s have decayed on the way to the detector and the decay products ensure that the polonium 214 is freshly formed in the detector so it can be measured directly. That's pretty cool. In another video I've already extracted the long lived polonium 210 isotope from the uranium ore and now you also know how to extract the extremely short-lived 214 and 218 polonium isotopes from this ore. Just apply 1000 volt high voltage to a coin and bake it for 30 minutes in a barrel with uranium. Easy right? With that being said goodbye.